Hello, friends. It's another fine day in the world of mathematics because today we are adding and subtracting fractions. This is one of those topics that can sometimes strike fear in the hearts of students. But fear not, you can do it. The first question we'll answer today is, why does adding and subtracting fractions seem so complicated? And then we'll look at, okay, so how do I add and subtract fractions? And finally, the age-old question, when will I ever use this in real life? Fantastic questions, let's get started. Some fractions are really easy to add. For example, you and your buddy order a pizza. You eat one-fourth of it, and he eats two-fourths of it. Well, how much have you both eaten together? If we add one-fourth and two-fourths, we get three-fourths. All we really did was add the top, the numerators, and the bottom, the denominators, stayed the same. The problem is that fractions aren't always that simple, are they? Say we have that same one-fourth of pizza, but this time your buddy came along and ate two-thirds of it. He was really hungry this time. Well, now how do we do that? I can see how much pizza has been eaten, but how do we represent that as a fraction? It can't be in terms of fourths, and it can't be in terms of thirds either. In other words, how can we add fractions when the denominators are different? Well, I'll show you. We are going to transform these fractions using the least common multiple. Right now, our two denominators are four and three. I'm gonna find their least common multiple and use that as the new denominator. Okay, let's see. First, we'll list some multiples of four and then some multiples of three. If we compare the two lists, we'll see that the least common multiple is 12. And that's our new denominator. Back to our problem. It was 1 fourth plus 2 thirds. But now we're going to rewrite the problem with 12 as the denominator. The fractions will look different, but still represent the same amount. Watch this. First step. How do we get from four to 12? Well, we multiply by three. Now, in order to make sure the fraction still represents the same amount, we have to remember this. Anything we do to the bottom of the fraction, we have to do to the top also. So if we multiply the bottom by three, we need to multiply the top by three. One times three is three, and I've transformed the fraction. And check this out. Three of the 12 slices are colored, so it's 3 twelfths, but it's still 1 fourth, too. Neat, huh? Okay, let's work on the next fraction now. How do we make 3 into 12? We multiply by 4, and anything we do to the bottom of the fraction, we need to do to the top also. So we'll multiply 2 by 4, and we get 8. 2 thirds became 8 twelfths but it still represents the same amount. Since we're working with twelfths now, we can fill in the bottom of the answer. Then we just add the numerators straight across, and we get 11 twelfths, which matches what we had before, but now it's in terms of equal parts, twelfths. Let's try another one, but we'll go a bit faster this time. We have 5 fifteenths plus 1 half, and first we ask ourselves, what's the least common multiple of 15 and two? You are probably pretty good at this by now, so what do you think it is? If you think 30, you're correct. So now we just rewrite the problem with the denominator of 30, and it's time to transform the fractions. First step, how do we get from 15 to 30? We multiply by two. Again, in order to make sure the fraction still represents the same amount, we have to do the same thing to the top. So if we multiply the bottom by two, we multiply the top by two, and five times two is 10. Next fraction, 
How do we get from 2 to 30? We multiply by 15. And the same on the top. 1 times 15 is 15. Now we know the answer also has a denominator of 30. And we just add the top. 10 plus 15 is 25. Sweet! Uh-oh. I see something we still need to do. We still need to simplify the fraction. And this is where the greatest common factor comes in. Let's see what we can do. Our fraction is 25 over 30. We'll find the greatest common factor by first listing the factors of 25. Huh, not too many. And the factors of 30. Then we compare the lists to see that the greatest common factor is five. So we'll use that to simplify our fraction. Back to the problem. We have 25 over 30. Using that greatest common factor of five, we can rewrite 25 as five times five, and we can rewrite 30 as five times six. We cancel out the fives and we're left with five sixths. Ah, that's much better. Yeah, okay, what about subtracting fractions? Well, actually, once you can add them, subtracting is easy because it's really the same idea. Let's try one. 5 eighths minus 3 sixths. First step, of course, is to find the least common multiple, which is what? 24. Now we'll rewrite the problem with 24 as the denominator and start transforming those fractions. To get from eight to 24, we multiply by three. We do the same to the top, and five times three is 15. Next one. To get from six to 24, we multiply by four. Same to the top, three times four is 12. 15 24ths minus 12 24ths is three 24ths. Can we reduce it? We can. First we ask, what's the greatest common factor of three and 24? It's three. So with that, we can rewrite the three as three times one, and we can rewrite 24 as three times eight. Cancel out the threes, and we're left with one eighth. Now we're finished. It's not too bad, is it? I can already guess what your next question is. Yep, that's what I thought. Why do I need to know this? Okay, here's a situation. The student council is trying to plan the school dance, but they can't decide on a theme. Should it be a zombie theme or a disco theme? They decide to poll the student body to see what they think. The results are that one third want a zombie theme and two fifths want a disco theme. Everyone else wants <gasps> No theme. Wait, no theme? The student council hadn't even considered that. So now they need to reconsider. What fraction of students want a themed dance? And what fraction of students want no theme at all? Let's just take the first question. What fraction of students want a themed dance? Well, we know that one third want zombies and two fifths want disco. So if we add those together, we'll get the total students who do want a theme of some sort. We can do this. The least common multiple of three and five is 15. Three times five is 15, so we multiply the one by five also, and the first fraction becomes five fifteenths. Now the next one. Five times three is 15, so we multiply two times three, and we get six fifteenths. Add them together, and we have 11 fifteenths. And we've answered the first question. 11 fifteenths of students do want a themed dance. But what about the second question? What fraction of students want no theme at all? To represent the whole student body, we can say 15 out of 15. That's everyone. Then we'll subtract those who want a theme. The denominators are already the same, so we just take 11 from 15 and we get 4 fifteenths. And now we've answered both of our questions. It looks like most students do want a themed dance. 
It'll either be zombies or disco. So now what do we do? Well, let's use our transformed fractions from before to compare those who want zombies to those who want disco. Using our least common denominator of 15, we transformed 1 3rd into 5 15 and 2 fifths into 6 15 Well, now we can just compare those two fractions. 6 15 is bigger than 5 15 so it looks like zombies is out. And it's gonna be a disco party. Well, that's it, friends. We've transformed fractions and planned a disco party. I'd call that a win for today. I'll see you later.